Any of you guys watch anime? I'm just curious. I'm sure several of you do. I'm not really a big fan of anime, but I'm aware of it and how it functions. And, you know, I, I know several shows and mangas. There's a concept over an anime <clears throat> where there's, like, <laughs> the side arcs, right? Like, they've decided to do a Bleach movie. And in the Bleach movie, they suddenly introduce some big bad we've never heard of before, and we'll never hear of again, who is some galactic world-ending threat of doom. And we need to stop him, and then we stop him. The end. Right? You know what I'm talking about? That little thing? An extremely self-contained story that functionally has the same problem a lot of Star Trek does. The threat of the weak problem. In other words, it's cheap, and it's kind of dumb. I'm sure it can be executed well, I just rarely see it done so. That's what these Mortis arcs feel like. Like there's some super mega powerful dark side guy, and some super mega powerful light side guy. Excuse me, excuse me. Selfishness and selflessness. And they're talking about the threat. This, this will spiral throughout the entire galaxy, and the dark side will empower the Sith. And the entire universe is at risk by these three people we've never heard of before and we'll never see again after the next episode when this arc concludes. I have to admit, if the scale was smaller, like if this was just a problem of one planet, like we've detected this weird planet that uh, sent out a strange distress call. It's an old distress call. Okay, well, let's go check it out. Oh, there's the planet. Okay, well, I don't see any separatists. Uh, scanners only show three people on the planet. And they go down and they find these three ancient force users who are going in this little internecine conflict. I might have been able to buy this a little bit more, but the whole threat of the universe thing completely kills it for me. That's ignoring the fact that I think this whole thing is extremely stupid. I'm trying really hard not to say that more than I just did and did in the previous episode, so it's kind of like... Yeah, um, I, I did kind of like the fact that on multiple occasions, uh, ah this is actually true in the last episode as well as this one, Ahsoka is like the the one for the dark side, right? Obi-Wan's the one who interacts with the light side woman and is the one who has been kidnapped by the light side woman and is the one who goes to try to peacefully work his way through, etc., etc., etc. And she's the one who was kidnapped by the dark side and then manipulated by the dark side and used the dark side, etc. Nice little dichotomy there of the two sides of Anakin's balance, if you will. So I'll give it that. I also want to say, as weird as this sounds, the voice acting for Anakin is really good in this episode. I know that's a strange thing to comment on, but too often Anakin, and Obi-Wan both for that matter, come across as too kids showy. I don't know how better to put that. Like, they just say things that don't really have the right tone, that don't really have the right meaning or emotion or inflection to them. Here, they sounded like Anakin and Obi-Wan, which... I point that out because that's kind of a rarity in this show, at least up to this point. And I thought it was good. It was good to see how much Anakin cares about this, how much Obi-Wan cares about this, and rather than the two coming to blows or anything stupid like that, you just see the two sides of the coin, right? Their own uh, differing perspectives on how to approach things. And we see how much he really does care. Both of them really do care. In fact, one of the things I love is the light side embodiment lady is, I must not get involved, which is very light side. As I've said before, I personally take the viewpoint that uh, both sides of the force, if taken to extremes, are a bad thing or a negative. And thus we see Obi-Wan arguing against that type of concept, saying you have to intervene, you have to get involved in this. You can't be completely pacifist. Right? And I like that because, as much as I just called Anakin and Obi-Wan different sides of the coin, that's not an accurate thing. That's, that's doing them both a disservice. Both of them are fully fleshed out people who are well, kind of gray, to be completely honest with you. Both of them have shades of multiple different perspectives and per, uh, perceptions. But both of them do kind of form a more unified whole between the two of them. That's always been the dynamic between the two, at least as far as the EU was concerned. And I do like that dynamic. So, And then we see, you know, I, oh, one other nice thing. A couple really tiny note I wanted to point out. When Ahsoka comes after Anakin with the lightsaber while she's being whatever, I like the fact that he lets her get within like two or three feet of him before he finally ignites his lightsaber. 
That was a nice touch. Tiny little thing there. And the way he and Obi-Wan fight her is wonderful. That's some of the best choreography I've seen so far. They've been having pretty decent choreography just as far as the fighting in general. And that's not, and that's not to say it's bad, and quite the contrary. I think it's excellent. It's one of the things I like most about this show is the lightsaber choreography. But this is better because it so clearly shows that this is not just a fight between two people, or three people as the case may be. This is a fight between one person and two people who desperately are trying not to hurt that person. And it's, a, it's very well done, and I just wanted to give praise where praise is due, because I really don't like this episode. <sighs> next week we go do more Mortis stuff. Yay. See you next time, guys.